like to welcome to the stage Paul Stenskirk, who is already on the stage, is the general manager of Blue Jay Mining. He is a Danish economic, uh, economic geologist with extensive operational experience in Greenland. Previously senior research scientist at the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland and a senior advisor on exploration and resource assessment to the European Innovation Community EIT Raw Materials. And I believe after Bull, Eric, Eric won't, so it will just be Bull. Then welcome to the stage. Thank you, and I will try to do it quickly so that you can get into lunch and so on. But I'm going to talk about some of the most exciting projects, in our opinion, of course, um, in Greenland right now. So, um, first, let's see if this works. Yeah, that one you know. Mm -hmm. So, Blue Jay. Blue Jay have been active in Greenland for many years now, and we have an experienced sort of team that have uh, been active in Greenland. Uh, of for the most uh, three decades. Um, we are having the Dundas Ilmenite project, I will return to that, that is our flagship project. We are having the Disco, Nickel, Copper, PGE, uh, Cobalt project, um, and also Kangluasu, Sink Lead. Um, I'll shortly also return to that, what we intend to do with those in 2018. Besides that, we are having three uh, different areas in Finland where we're having a Finnish team sort of working on those. But back to uh, Dundas Ilmenite project in Greenland, our most advanced project, our flagship project. So this is a project that we have developed over the last four years, really stepping it up uh, during the last three years uh, with major work programs. Uh, so in three years time, we have developed this into a very large resource, um, 101 million tons at 7.1% uh, uh, it's Ilmenite. Um, and really increase the, the maiden resource by 300%. Um, on top of that, we are uh, getting additional resources coming in from the work that we have done in uh, 2018. But of course, this is sort of underpinning um, the base for a very uh, um, good PFS study that we are working on right now. So we are on track here to become the next mine in Greenland. Um, we have the resources here, uh, upgrade in 2018, there are more coming, uh, and we have a significant uh, ton of potential for expansion in the area. Here in uh, quarter one, quarter two, 2019, we'll have the previous ability study coming out first and then follow shortly by that uh, with the environmental impact assessment and the social impact assessment and start the entire procedure with the Greenland government uh, on getting the exploitation license. We are starting on the initial planning uh, um, at site, uh, the initial investigations on the, on the infrastructure. Um, we have a very close dialogue with several uh, major producers of titanium, um, and we hope to be able to bring uh, some of them into Greenland again, these major mining companies. Um, we anticipate uh, an exploitation license in 2019 and we'll be able to start the construction phase after that and then develop the mine itself into production. This is our mining and processing scheme uh, um, which will be part of the PFS coming out. It's very simple actually, it's sand that you have up there. So we are moving sand here, we're washing the sands and we're using the magnetic properties of the minerals to separate them and then we, then we have the ilmenite shipping it off. We um, started by taking out, stripping the first 10 centimeters of, of organic soil in the top and so on. We'll do that later. We'll remain that for the sort of, uh, and use that for, for remediation work uh, later. Then we'll do uh, cutting and digging and continuous miners that simply will cut the, the ore. Um, that will be transported uh, by trucks. There will be a screening of it. It will go into a mobile wet plant, um, a gravity wet plant. Um, after that, it will go into a dry magnetic plant and then it will be uh, stored on site that then will be carried uh, to the market by, by uh, bulk carriers. It's a low environmental impact. There are no chemicals in this, there are no crossing, there are no liberation in the, in the minerals, it's sand. Uh, there are no tailings, it's natural products that we're dealing with here. Um, and we are backfilling into the mining voids. We actually uh, 88%, 90% of what we uh, take out, we're actually putting back into the mining voids. 
The rest is a product that we can ship off. Um, and it's a very easy remediation that we're looking at here. The client scenario that we're working on right now in our PFS is an onshore mining. There is a potential to go offshore and look at the expansion offshore and so on, but we have decided to go uh, and start up here with an onshore mining scenario and have a full P PFS development on that. <laughs> we're looking at all year uh, production. We're looking at um, 440 tons of ilmenite uh, concentrate uh, a year, and this can all be scaled up. Um, also, the further sort of uh, advantages or further possibilities for uh, sort of developing the project even more, and uh, the economics in the project from automatization, remotely controlled operation, electrification, alternative uh, renewable um, power, and so on. This is the mining site. So, in blue, outlined in blue, you have the entire sort of ore body that we're going to to mine. Uh, I think that right now we are actually beating, at least sort of area-wise, we are beating everybody on the size here. Um, but this is bulk material, so size metals here. But we have a, an ore body here that is 13 kilometers times one and a half kilometers in width. We'll go from the northwestern corner and down to the southeastern corner uh, and mine the entire way up and down. Um, we will have a mine life here of at least 10 years. That is our PFS is on. Um, the, the, wind, the wet gravity plant will be mobile so that we can move it uh, as we go along and mine from one corner to the other corner. We can move it uh, every second, uh, third year in the production phase. Um, it'll go to dry storage. We will have dry storage on site. I don't think I have a pointer here. I do. Um, so we have the dry storage over here. Um, we'll put in um, workshops, accommodation, office, medical and safety facilities, uh, an airstrip, port facility, and full fuel storage. Um, we have an open window uh, for ships, which is uh, four months. That's plenty. We need uh, 10 to 12 ships, uh, supermarks, ice class ship coming in uh, for the ore here. Um, we are looking at, in the construction phase, having 80 to 120 workers on site here in the construction phase, which will be 18 months. Uh, during production, we'll have around 175 employees uh, with a rotation um, that will be then 120 men on site at all times. So this is just to point out, um, this is the future area of the uh, of the infrastructure here, the entire sort of 13 kilometers actually starts off the, the picture here and all the way down to here. We'll go up and down and mine the entire way. This is more of a sack mining town, uh, not mine, yeah, it is in the mining town now, but uh, the abandoned settlement of um, Moyo Sack in the middle here, which we also have used. <coughs> what is also important to realize on this picture is that this is rake beaches that we are talking about here with the, the black sand. Um, the situation here is that 12,000 years ago you had a situation where the water level was up at 35 meters plus. Then it went down to 35 meters below current sea level and then up to zero meters. That means that not, a, not only do you have the same beaches here onshore, and that's our current uh, mining scenario, you also have them offshore here. So there's a future potential for, for expanding into this area as well. So um, the deposit that we have here is unique in, in nature. It's one source, it's kiln, uh, sills that are lying in the hinterland behind the deposit that is the source. It's only that source that are providing the ilmenite here. It's uh, natural forces and, and processes that have liberated the ilmenite and deposited it on the beaches and so on. And actually what is unique here is also that the Arctic climate here work for you. You're not altering the, the ilmenite in an Arctic climate. If this has been in the sort of a tropical conditions, you would have altered the ilmenite, and from that you will get not a unique, uh, um, uh, consistent product uh, of ilmenite, but that you do have. It's an exceptional high grade uh, with a significant tonnage uh, with offsides. It's a very simple mining and, and processing. Um, it's low cost operation. It has a commercial value of the product. It can be used for different products. It has a strategic location to US and to Europe where there are several majors um, located and that have 
uh, um, running plants uh, for titanium. It has a low environmental impact, um, um, and we feel that we have a very supportive uh, government uh, and local community. We have close uh, dialogue with the government, with education institutions in, in Greenland, with stakeholders, local communities, and we believe that this is really a this is a project with an options to do it, to sort of develop the mining industry in Greenland even further and so on. And hopefully also by that sort of bringing in uh, major mining companies to Greenland. So we are in the course of securing offtake partners on this. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a discussion with several major producers. There's a close dialogue with Rio Tinto. Um, <coughs> We have the pre-feasibility study, the environmental and social impact study coming out now. Uh, after that, there will be the public uh, stakeholder con consultations, white book, um, and there will be, uh, we hope, the acceptance and the approval from the Greenland government. So we anticipate to have the exploitation license here in 2019, um, and also, of course, with that, also the impact and uh, benefit agreement, and we will over 2019 continue to develop the project and do the initial planning of, on the construction of that and also do some of the continued exploration that we are doing on site. Just shortly on the disco nickel, copper, cobalt and platinum group uh, project in West Greenland, we are further down as you really said now. This has many analogies with the, the Norilsk uh, mining district in Siberia, the, the world famous Norilsk nickel mining district. Um, it's really unique. Every time that you go out and sort of look at what should be in an area where you would have an oil analogy, you can tick the box here and so on. We have already, through previous work and so on, a lot of data here from this area and there has been identified uh, uh, drill targets here and so on. We are looking at advancing that, uh, getting more knowledge on and so on and progress into a, a drilling campaign in the near future. So what we're looking at in 2019, this is still sort of being planned, uh, that is to uh, have fixed wind uh, gravity in the area, enhance uh, FTG uh, survey, that is really the world's most advanced moving base gravity system that you can have with an exceptional uh, increased accuracy and high spatial resolution on your data. We're looking at bringing in uh, drones uh, to do a magnetics and hyperspectral and photogrammetry survey. Um, we are looking also at having geochemistry, mo uh, me mobile metal iron and soil gas hydrocarbons done to predict the geochemistry in these areas and so on. And we will now go into a phase of also doing a complete sort of integrated 3D modeling of the, of the, of the, um, the known targets um, to sort of facilitate in the coming years a drilling program here. We also have the Kanglu Kangluasuk uh, zinc, lead, and silver project in West Greenland. It's um, um, a sulfide mineralization next to Black Angel, so analogies with that. Here we are looking again using the same technology, the gravity system uh, on that, the 3D modeling, and we'll this year also go and uh, do some drill site uh, preparation for uh, coming years. I will not spend time with uh, our Finland projects and so on. We do have those three, and we are just keeping momentum on, on those um, with the team that we have in Finland. We are looking at developing the world's highest grade Ilmenite project, advancing significant high value exploration projects, and uh, the motto on the sort of being discovered, developed, and delivered. So, thank you.